Welcome back, gardeners. Today I wanted to share with you seven things you must add to a seed starter mix or a potting mix, or you could use it in any soil mix you want to enrich the quality for your plant. Now, while you can sift a store bought potting mix and tin it down to get rid of those larger debris, it's just going to be at level good. Now, if you really want to take things up a notch and make a potting, soil, or seed starting mix that your plants will appreciate, you'll have to use the seven things I have in this video. Now, for the base of my soil mix, I'm going to just be using some topsoil. And you could also use potting soil. This is an organic topsoil, and buying a higher quality potting mix or a topsoil will give your soil mix a better start off. You can optionally shift the mix to a quarter inch mesh if you like, but this topsoil quality of this brand is pretty good, so it need not to sift. The first ingredient you could add to any soil mix which will feed your plants is compost. Compost is a rich source of mineral and nutrients for plants. Homemade compost contains about 0.5% nitrogen, 0.27% phosphorus and about 0.81% potassium. Compost is also full of microbes and good riches to use in the garden. Preferably use homemade compost in your mix and if you don't have compost you could substitute with manure. If you're using manure in your mix in any form you'll want to make sure that it's fully composted before putting it in your mix because using an active hot compost with nitrogen can burn the roots of your plant. There's a little too much, so I take back some of the big stuff. The second ingredient you can add to any soil mix is worm casting. While worm castings don't have a high ratio of NPK, they have microbes which help enrich the plant. Most worm castings will have an NPK ratio of 100, which means it has 1% nitrogen, 0% phosphorus, and 0% potassium. Into my mix, I'll add a small amount of worm casting, maybe one of these cups. Rock dust does not contain enough of an NPK ratio to qualify as a real fertilizer. But the real power of rock dust to giving plants a helping hand is its trace mineral which it adds back into the soil. Into the mix, I'll be adding a small amount, maybe just a handful. Up next is kelp powder. Adding to the last point, kelp does not have a high NPK ratio, but it contains 60 trace minerals. The big plus with using kelp powder is that it has growth hormones which help your plants grow. Now you can also use kelp meal, a liquid kelp fertilizer. To the mix, I'll be only adding about one handful, maybe two, because kelp has lots of trace minerals, and plants don't need a lot of trace minerals in order to grow and thrive. Personally, I think it's better to add an organic fertilizer to your soil mix because it'll feed your plants over the long time. The nutrients in organic fertilizer is not bioavailable to the plants right away as organic fertilizer need the soil biology to break it down first before it could be available to the plant. Into the mix, I'll be adding about three quarter cup of an organic fertilizer here. And I'll also be adding about a quarter cup of bone meal. The next ingredient you could use to bring up the quality of your soil mix is perlite. Perlite is used to help in drainage. Proper drainage is important for all the roots of your plant because if your soil don't drain, then your plant will die due to the overall lack of oxygen, which will lead to root rot and will kill your plant. In this mix, I'll be adding about a third of this bag. Already a third been used. So. Oh, and in case you are wondering for the measurement, this is a 10 liter bag of perlite. The seventh ingredient is used to increase water retention. Peat moss is used to help in the aid of soil drainage and to help retain water. Peat moss can hold up to 20 times the amount of water of its weight. Because peat moss is light and airy, it will also help our mix not to get overly compacted. Peat moss is slightly acidic, so you'll have to use an alkaline substance to neutralize the pH and break even. If you burn wood, then you're sure to have wood ash. Wood ash has an NPK ratio of 0, 0,13. It's a good source of potassium to use in your garden. 
It also contains micronutrients for the plants. Now you must be respectful when using wood ash because wood ash has a alkalinity in between 9 and 11. To this mix, I'll just be adding a few handful of wood ash as if you add too much, it could cause the leaves of your plant to turn yellow due to the high alkalinity. The high alkalinity of wood ash should help cancel out the acidity caused by peat moss because peat moss is slightly acid by about 3.5 to 4.5 on the pH scale. Soil biology plays a key role in the health of your plants. So what you can do to your mix is to add some forest soil. Forest soil is rich of good fungi and good bacteria that will help your plants. You can buy a mycorrhizal fungi which will do the same effect for your plants. If you decide to go gather some stuffs, you'll have to break it up because there could be some woody stuff. It's better to go for the nice fine peat he stuffs and the nice soil. If you happen to see any little white stuffs or spidery web looking things, that is good. That's a good sign that you found some fungi. Most soil quality today is not so good and they want to charge a ton of money in order just to get it. The things are getting more expensive and quality seems to be getting lower. Which is why I feel you need to add some kind of nutrition to your soil. So with about a few minutes of mixing, I got this whole soil mix mixed. And this is what you want, a nice spongy, good texture that is nice and moist. I'll put the recipe ratios roughly about on the screen so you could see. Um, and things don't have to be accurate, it's just uh, rough. And that's how you can make your own DIY seed mix using the seven things that I mentioned in this video so you can have your own rich mix that you made at home. Continue to learn and go. Goodbye!